Hey everyone, um, I'm going to explain some things about uh, height maps and normal maps. Um, we'll try and keep it pretty quick, but um, this is a this is a height map I've got here. It's really it's it's very simplistic, and I don't think anyone would ever use this in a game. But um, it's just to show the concept, right? This is uh, the the idea of a height map is anything dark is considered to be low, and anything uh, light is considered to be higher. So gray is about the middle. Um, to sort of illustrate what this means, uh, I'm just going to trace a line. Imagine this is a cross section of this image. So like we've got this texture on a plane, right? Say we're looking at a cross section, it might look something like this. And when it starts to hit the gray, it's going to raise up. And now we're sort of at a solid gray. And then when it hits this, this white, it's going to go up higher again. And then come back down because it's down at the gray again. And uh, go pretty flat. Then go back down to the dark color. And obviously uh, anything that's the same, like this is gray is the same as this gray, so they're going to be at the same level. It's kind of like one of those, um, like a contour map, or a, one of those sort of cutout puzzle toys where you sort of add layers of, um, of wood to make a 3D looking thing. Sort of similar thing going on here, except this is obviously an indent because it's darker, right? So this would be what the cross section of this, this, uh, this part of it would look like. And um, maybe a uh, better example to show you what this means is uh, this. It's got um, it's just a plane, and it's been subdivided into 256 by 256 quads. And I've just used that image as the di displacement map, uh, which is pretty much the same concept as a height map, right? And um, you probably have figured out already that they use this for terrain. Um, generally, that's what a height map's for. Uh, when you do all your sculpting and stuff in UDK for your levels, it'll sort of store it all as a height map. So like, um, apart from the terrain thing we already mentioned, the the other use for like a height map would be um, a parallax map. That's generally what's used on, uh, they, they sometimes use it on terrain for extra detail, and um, sometimes they sort of use it on uh, other things as well but it's not hugely common what that does is uh, it's pretty much the same deal it uses the same kind of image but instead of uh, having like a plane divided into segments and then pushing it and morphing it sort of it'll have multiple layers so you'll have like you know a layer just for the for the dark parts and then you'll start it'll start building them up and then you know it'll cut them out here and it'll be literally like one of those little um, puzzle things so uh, that's pretty much how parallax map works and you can pick the resolution of these by you know you can change it um, but I don't have a parallax map shader handy for this version of Max right now so I can't actually show that um, they're also they suffer from the same thing as a normal map um, which I'll show you in a second this is obviously changing the actual geometry the the normal map and the parallax map they're just an illusion and they don't actually look like they have depth when you look at them from a grazing angle like this. Um, so I'll explain what a normal map is. The deal with your normal map is it's got this, uh, instead of the black and white, it's like a kind of wacky, um, purpley, bluey colored image. Um, the way this actually works, I've sort of explained before, but I'm just going to do it in contrast with the, uh, with the height map really quickly. It's um, instead of storing uh, height, right, instead of saying, you know, um, this is uh, how much displacement from the surface there is. Uh, it'll just store the angle. So um, what's actually happening here is the the this color here means it's just pointing straight up, right? And uh, the actual the actual plane that it's textured on is still going to be completely flat, right? But um, as you get here, this blue is saying the surface is actually pointing over in that direction somewhere. And again, this is straight up again. Uh, and once you get to around here, it's sort of, <laughs> it's, it's going to be pointing out here somewhere, in here somewhere, that kind of thing. And then, uh, straight up again, I guess. So they're all, um, it's, it's sort of telling you which direction, uh, each point on the surface is facing using color. And, um, I'll just, uh, show you how that works really quickly. Um, you can see this is the red channel. This right here is halfway, exactly halfway between white and black, so it's straight up from the surface, right? So if you have a dark, uh, darker area, it's pointing over towards that angle somewhere. If it was black, it would mean it's pointing 
straight over to the left. Um, a, you know, the same, the opposite is the same on the other side. If this, this lighter color is like pointing over there somewhere. And if it was completely white, it would be pointing directly there and it would interact with the light as if that part of the uh, surface was facing that way. Um, same deal with the green channel, except it's just doing a different direction. It's kind of like a graph. It's like saying, you know, this is, um, imagine this is just the X and the Y the, of the surface, obviously, and the, and the, the points on the, the pixels are just a graph saying, this is which way it's facing in the X, this is which way it's facing in the Y, so this way, this, this is facing obviously up that direction, or in that direction, and this one's facing straight out from the image. Um, and then blue is whether it's facing towards you, or like if you were looking directly at the surface, it's whether it's facing towards you or away from you. So obviously all these ones where the normal is pointing uh, straight up, they're just, they're white because they're facing completely towards you. And as it sort of goes around to these edges, they're sort of facing a little bit away from you. And it just uses that in the um, calculation a bit as well. A lot of the time, as you can see, this is there's not much going on in this uh, in this layer. A lot of the time, you can actually knock out the blue channel without it really affecting the shading too much. Um, and people will often store like a parallax map or something in the blue channel of the RGB because they only need eight bits for it. They don't actually need uh, you know they don't need a full RGB map, and it can be efficient to store other things in different channels. So um, a demonstration of a normal map in the actual uh, program. Uh, this one's got that normal map applied to it, right? As you can see, it has this kind of 3D look, but obviously as soon as you look at it from a gra uh, grazing angle, you can see that it's all it's doing is it's just acting like the surface is facing another direction, even though it actually isn't. Okay, so that's what a normal map does, and they're pretty efficient. They're a lot faster than uh, bending, uh, you know, morphing the surface. And the reason that is, is because... Uh, if you were using a height map to do this in a, in a game engine sort of environment, you'd have to actually calculate, um, you'd have to say, if, you, if you're just popping stuff, stuff up off the surface, um, that's basically what a parallax map does. And a parallax map isn't going to actually um, alter the lighting at all. It's just going to push things up. Um, if you wanted to figure out which way the lighting has to come from, you'd have to actually compute it using this and that's why if they have a parallax map they'll often use a normal map as well because this is essentially it has all of those angles pre-computed in in the image right you just use that rather than having to derive it from doing some maths on all these surfaces around here and all these around here um what else oh right another thing worth uh saying is uh it's what if you're drawing uh height maps i mean i can script on this a little bit and uh show you what can happen if I just make a copy of this, and uh, there's some pretty good um, normal map filters. The one I'm using right now is just the one that comes with X normal, which is a free program. But the uh, the course recommends you use uh, the Photoshop filter. The Photoshop filter does exactly the same thing, but uh, you know height to normals. I can just convert a height map into a normal map using this tool. Um, I want the uh, this is another important thing. The the coordinates sometimes are inverted X and Y. I know for a fact that Max faces negative Y in the green channel, so I'm just doing that now. I've converted that. I'm going to save it out uh, just quickly. And uh, these little extra scribbles of white are going to look like they're uh, pushed up from the surface. See, there we go. It's loaded in. And um, now he's got squiggles on his face. So normal maps, uh, they're pretty cool, and you can just sort of create them out of height maps quite easily. Um, I'll probably do a longer workshop on specifically that kind of workflow, but um, hopefully this is enough to get you started and get some ideas flowing. So um, talk to you next time.